So the next uh, technique that we are going to look at for regularization is data set augmentation. It's uh, again a uh, simple but very effective technique. Uh, so in data set augment augmentation, this is what you do, right? So suppose your training data set was about uh, digit classification, right? And many of you would have experimented with the MNIST data set. Uh, so this, these are some images given in the MNIST data set. So this is say one of the images that was given and whose label is of course uh, 2, right? So this is the digit 2. Now what you could do is that from this image, you could create some other images, right? So what, what are the other images you could create? You could define certain uh, transitions, right? So you could rotate this image by 20, 20 degree and get a new image, right? And that image, the label would still be 2. So you don't need to manually label this. You know that even if I rotate the image by a small amount, of course, for some things like 6 and 9, if you rotate by 180 degrees, then uh, you'll have a problem. But for most digits, you will not have this problem, right? So you could rotate by a small amount. You could shift it vertically, right? So the 2 being at the center of the image, you could bring it down, you could take it up, and you would get a different image. You could shift it horizontally or you could blur the image, you could also change some pixels and add some noise, right? And by doing all of this, you have just created more training data. And what you're doing here is actually you are uh, exploiting the knowledge of the task, right? So you know that if you rotate the image, if you do any of these augmentations that you have seen, and there are many such more augmentations in the possible in uh, case of image classification, the label does not change. So I can create a lot of data for free from the data that was given. And now, how does this help? So now you have more training data. And now it's no longer enough for the network to kind of uh, uh, overfit that, okay, whenever I see this combination of pixels, I will uh, mark it as two. Because now that will not work for this guy because now the pixels have changed a bit, the orientation of the pixels have changed and so on. So this, this will not, uh, it cannot easily overfit, right? It has a harder task. So you have given it much more training data that it has to by heart now, right? It has to memorize now. And that will make it, uh, uh, make it less prone to overfitting, right? Because there is just so much to learn that it cannot overfit possibly on all of this. Of course, modern deep neural networks will still overfit. But it's found that doing this kind of data augmentation, which comes for free, it's not additional cost for you, then why not just try it? and you would be able to get uh, a, a lesser chance of overfitting in this case, right? Uh, that's all there is to this technique, right? There's nothing more to be said here. The only intuition here is that you have more training data, you have more variants of the same image, and all of that you have to be able to classify as two. So now this uh, chance of just memorizing and not understanding reduces a bit, right? That's all that happens. And uh, this works well for image classification, object recognition. It has already also been tried well for speech. Now it has also been tried for text. There are libraries which allow you to do data augmentations. But in text, it's still a bit harder to come up with very uh, meaningful augmentations. Uh, the main difference is in image and speech, you have like continuous signals, whereas in text, you have discrete. Uh, you have just words, whereas in speech, you have a continuous signal. Similarly, in image, you have these pixels and so on. So uh, that's the main uh, difference. But even for text nowadays, there are certain an annotation techniques available, right? So that's all to be said about data set augmentation. Uh, the next technique is about parameter sh sharing and tying. And we'll see this a bit more detail when we talk about uh, convolutional neural networks. So in convolutional neural networks, you have, if you want to process an image, you do what is, uh, you use what is known as a convolutional filter and the same filter is applied to different parts of the image, right? So what I'm trying to show you here, and this is of course become much more clear when we do convolutional neural networks, is that I have a matrix, you can think of that as a matrix of weights. Now instead of defining a separate matrix for every part of the image, I'm going to use the same matrix and apply it to different parts of the image, right? So that's the basic idea. I'll not say anything more at this point because you need to understand what convolution is and so on. And we'll see this in more detail when we uh, reach uh, there, right? Okay. And also in the case of uh, auto encoders, which we'll see after a few lectures, is also known as something known as weight tying. So what you do in weight tying is that uh, if you look at this, suppose this is n dimensional and this is d dimensional, and this is again n dimensional. So then the weight matrix that you will have here would be n cross d dimensional, right? And the weight matrix that you'll have here would be d cross n dimensional. Let's call this P and let's call this Q. Then what you could do 
is you could say that uh, I'll just enforce P transpose equal to Q. That means I'll not have a separate P matrix here. I'll just use Q transpose and uh, Q transpose is indeed D cross N, the matrix that I was looking for. So ha instead of having separate weights in these two layers, I'm using the same weight in both the layers. Right? So that's called weight tying and this is also a common way of uh, doing regularization. It has also been tried in the modern transformer based models where you have eight different layers and multiple attention heads and you kind of do some parameter tying that means you across all the layers instead of having a separate matrix of weights in each of these layers you, you just reuse the weights uh, across all the layers or you share or tie the weights across all the layers right. So this will again become uh, make more sense when we do either when we do auto encoders or later on when we talk about transformers. But for the sake of completeness, I'm just mentioning it here. So you, you know that these are also uh, regularization techniques. Right? And this here, the regularization in both these cases is clear, right? So here I'm using the same weight matrix. That means I'm not allow using separate weights. That means I'm using fewer weights and fewer weights means smaller models, smaller model means smaller complexity. And the same thing I'm use, doing here, instead of using two times the number of weights that I should have used, I'm just using uh, one time that, right? So I'm just using W instead of using two Ws. So again, I'm reducing the model complexity, right? So in both these cases, it should be clear how this is acting as a regularizer. So I'll end this video here. Thank you.